Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. I hope you're doing good and welcome to today's video. Approximately one year ago I thought I'd try to make a couple of videos and upload them to YouTube. I had the idea to make a ruined temple diorama and for a first attempt I was really happy with the result so I thought it would be a nice way to see how far I've come to revisit this theme and build something similar, paying homage to the original but reimagining the idea and using some of the skills I've picked up along the way. Okay, so the first thing I needed was plants. Lots of plants. And in one of life's beautiful synchronicities, an email arrived from a company called Diorama Precipe, saying that they wanted to send me some products. So I picked a few boxes and then this arrived. Diorama Precipe are a company who make absolutely amazing plants for dioramas. Their range is huge. But the quality, as you will see later, is absolutely top-notch. A really premium product, so if you do want some high-quality plants for your builds, go check out the website. I want to say a massive thank you to Fabio at Diorama Precipe for his generosity, as he's stuffed this box full of extras. Thank you. And you can be sure that I will put it all to good use. So to begin, I glued some XPS foam to a spare piece of wood I had lying around to give me a solid base from which to work from. XPS foam is much denser than polystyrene for example, and a great modelling material. The density allows you to carve into it as it holds details wonderfully. It is a bit more expensive than polystyrene but definitely worth it in my opinion. I use a hot wire cutter to slowly scoop out a depression and to make the ground look a bit more interesting. I wanted to add some water later so somewhere with a lower ground would be perfect for this. You could also do this with a sharp knife but it just would take a bit longer. To smooth things up a little, I gave it a quick persuasion with some fire. The foam can smell a little as it melts, so maybe open a window or do this outside. I cut some foam to size and thought this would be a good way of building up the foundations for my temple. I poked some cocktail sticks into the foam for added strength and stability. I wanted to make some stairs and had some thinner foam that I thought would work great for this. I cut these roughly to size and then carefully cut a step into each piece. A sharp blade is recommended for this and as ever take care not to cut yourself. And when put together I could adjust the overall length of each step as needed to achieve the angle that I wanted. Doing it this way saved a ton of math and measuring. <laughs> I cut the back of the stairs off and then quickly realised that I'd made them too high. Whoops. So I called in the ground crew to do some last minute terraforming. Perfect. Thanks guys. I cut some graphics pad and some more foam and began to design the entrance to this mystical temple. No real plan here, just making it up as I go along really, playing with shapes to create nice little details. I cut some plastic tubes to size and made little foam bases for these to act as pillars. In a nod back to my previous attempt, and using some wood moulding I still had left over from the original build, I started to work on the details for the roof. I did some bamboo sticks to add some more decoration. I ordered some bracelet beads cheap from Amazon, and thought it would be nice to try and incorporate these into the build, as they are pretty ornate and full of detail. I glued these onto some cocktail sticks and wedged a skull bead in between and carefully popped these onto my walls. One tiny bead on top finished these off nicely. Next I made up some plaster rocks using a Woodland Scenics rock mould. Now in the past I was sceptical about this kind of thing. Just carve some rocks, or use real ones, and they would be valid responses. But I've been using these for a while now and they make producing rocks really easy. And whilst browsing the web for other useful hobby stuff, I found some skull-shaped ice cube moulds 
and thought I'd take a gamble on them as repeatable skulls are always really useful to have. Good level of detail and definitely usable. I took some more beads and began to make some dividing pillars for my larger plaster skulls to create more detail. I shaved these off with my Dremel and glued these onto a cocktail stick. Added a couple more bracelet beads and glued these into place. I made a quick doorway and carved some basic details into this with a pencil. No need to be perfect here, just making it up as I go. Then I had the wild idea to create a tunnel within this temple carved directly out of the mountain. And it posed a question that I often wrestle with in most of my builds and thought I'd touch on the subject of order of processes. If you are building something, then think about the different stages that you will need to complete and will one step interfere with the previous step or a future step. A little planning goes a long way and I say this as much to myself as I do to you as I don't tend to plan my builds too much and pretty much make them up as I go along. I continued working on my stonemasonry skills by carving some stones into the foam. I've watched some amazing videos recently about ancient stonework and how ancient civilizations like the Egyptians or early Incas had the ability to craft huge stone blocks into shape with amazing precision. So much so that you couldn't fit a sheet of paper between the blocks. My stonework here is nowhere close to that standard, but I did the best I could. I took this a step further by printing out some temple decorations from a real temple in India and used them as a template to trace a simplified version onto the foam below. This took some time and the thought of doing multiple panels suddenly seemed like a pretty big task, but my curious drive to see what it would look like kept me going. I deepened the marks made by my first pass and slowly the true image appeared. This worked out really well and just goes to show that with enough patience you can achieve a lot of detail in the foam. And so, having done my carving, I began to construct the tunnel within my temple. I probably went further than needed as most of this detail will never be seen, but it makes me happy to know that it's there. And this is where I want to go back to my earlier mention of processes. Which step, when? In order to paint the inside of the tunnel, I knew I had to skip forward a couple of steps as I wouldn't be able to reach the inside later down the line. So I sealed all the foam with a mix of Mod Podge so that the solvent in the primer wouldn't eat away at the foam. I could have mixed paint into the Mod Podge and consolidated two steps into one, but I wanted to keep the paint application as thin as possible as so I wouldn't lose any details that I'd carved into the walls. I filled some gaps with some wall filler to make a better transition from the ground to the stone. I pre-shaded the tunnel with an airbrush, spraying some black into the corners and areas that I wanted to have darker. Then I added some homemade dark wash made with some black and brown inks and used this to deepen the carved lines between the stones. I wanted to add some kind of statue hidden within the darkness of this temple and managed to find one about the right size on Amazon. For those interested, this is Ganesh, Lord of the People from the Hindu religion. I also added a small flickering orange LED to represent some candlelight and ran the wires behind the wall so they would be hidden. I added a switch so I could turn the light on and off as an option. I made some small little candles out of green stuff. For those not familiar with this product, it is a two-part putty that when mixed together goes green, hence the name, and is a great hobby tool that can be used for filling gaps, converting miniatures and even sculpting. I popped these on some blue tack to hold them in place and gave them a quick coat of paint. 
I added a bit of foliage, some vines and some dried roots, a bit of flock here and there, and then started to carefully add the candles around the statue. I carefully painted some wax strips where the candles may have melted a little. I mixed up and tinted and poured some resin into my trough to represent water. And then sprinkled a little bit of flock just to tie it all together. Again, going back to our conversation about processes, I've had to really fast forward many steps while the rest of the build outside the temple is still at a relatively early age. <laughs> Confusing or what? Once everything was dry, I could seal my tunnel with the roof and begin building up the rest of the diorama. Here you can see what happens if you don't seal your foam properly, as some of the foam has started to melt a little. But not to worry, this will all be hidden behind rocks. I used my selection of plaster rocks that I'd cast earlier to build up the rock face paying attention not to create a repetitive pattern and keep things as varied and random as possible. One of the reasons I like working with the rock mold so much is that you can break the plaster where you want, giving you endless options and shapes to play with. I added some foam offcuts behind the rock face to give some support, and this meant that I could keep the layer of plaster rocks quite thin. I filled in the gaps between the rock with some sculptor mold. Again, a wonderful modeling product made from plaster and small clumps of mashed paper that gives you a really lovely texture. Great for rocks when dry. Because the plaster is very porous by nature, I sealed this with some thinned down PVA so the paint wouldn't sink into the plaster rocks too much. Once dry, I started to add some of my wash mixture, varying the amount of darkness as I went to give me some random color variation in the rocks. You can see how with a little flow aid, this wash really sinks into all the cracks nicely. I add some transparent brown ink again to push the color variation further. And while I was at this step in the process, I also added some wash to the stonework and decorative parts of the temple as these would be hard to reach later. I started to add some acrylic paint to my rock, heavily thinned with water, and began playing with combinations of gray and brown to achieve a realistic color for my rocks. Once dry, I went over everything with a light grey and dry brushed this onto the upward facing parts of the rock by dragging my brush downwards and varying the amount of pressure and paint I could start to build up some pretty realistic looking rock faces. And again, while I had the dry brush out I also give the rest of the temple a good once over with the same colour grey. The next step in my process was to begin to add some massive root structures. Again, no plan, just play with shapes and have faith that it will all work out in the end and start by gluing them into place. I've collected a whole range of sticks and branches from going for walks and, and found that dead ivy gives these really nice twisted structures. And if you're lucky, you can even find ones that are intertwined. Let's be honest, going for walks and being in nature is great, but if you can enjoy the great outdoors and work on your hobby a little at the same time, that's a double win for me. I glued these into place with tiny dots of hot glue because I didn't want the whole thing held together with giant visible globules of glue, sometimes a dot of super glue, whatever the task calls for really. I was really happy with how things were looking and Thankful that I learned the lesson of stages and foresight from the original video, as the stonework and the temple would have been impossible to reach by now. Now to make some ground from which to build the forest on. I'd run out of dried soil, which I'd collected, and the weather recently has been very wet, so, so no chance of finding more dried soil anytime soon. 
but not to worry. I could make some out of old bark chips I had in my stash, a quick blast in a coffee grinder, and I had some really nice naturally colored small particles. To this, I added some dyed oregano. I also crushed up some dried roots to give me nice little sticks. And to this concoction, I add some PVA glue, some structure gel, and a little bit of water. And then finish it off with a few squirts of paint just to tint everything a little. A winning recipe if I've ever heard one. But in all honesty, as long as you include some PVA glue and enough water to make it spreadable, you can pretty much mix anything into this and get a whole wide range of different results depending on the ingredients. Let me know if you have a favourite mixture for ground texture in the comments below. I spread this out over the ground and leave this to dry fully overnight. And Remembering my earlier success in terms of process, I had the bright idea to add some washes to my roots, as again these would be hard to reach once I start adding my foliage. Now in my original video I experimented with using plastic plants. Some model companies specifically make plastic plants. Aquarium plastic plants can also be great. If used creatively these can be a fast way of getting pretty realistic looking plants. The colours can sometimes be a little bit wild, or the plastic is even transparent in places. But with a bit of love and care, cut to pieces and reformed, and a good paint job, and I've found that they can be a really good durable solution that is pretty cheap. Diorama Precipe also stock a range of paper and plastic plants, again offering a quick and cheaper solution. And these look great, easily stacked up to create variety. but I wanted to see where I could push this to. So I cut it to pieces and glued them back together to make a great looking massive plant, not bad. And a great place to start on adding some plant life to this model. I glued a couple of these on and also added a few smaller ones just as a nod back to the original model and the way that it was built. Then it came to the real deal, and why I rate Diorama Precipe so highly. They stabilize a whole range of natural plants so that they can be used for dioramas and miniatures and not decay over time. Some are also painted with dye, so they remain vibrant in color. I'm no expert and couldn't tell you exactly what type of plant this is, but it looks cool and would begin to add another level of realism to the diorama. I drilled a small hole with a pin vise, added a small dot of glue, and carefully popped these into place. You can see at this stage I hadn't really thought about using tweezers, yet it just goes to show how robust these plants actually are. A stick here, and a couple of branches there. I found a really nice moss type of plant in the box and applied patches of these in the same way as the other plants. These were far more delicate in nature so I switched to angled tweezers to make life easier. Again, I can't rate the quality of these plants enough. I've stabilized some moss myself with water and glycerine in the past, but if you don't have interest in doing it yourself, then these off-the-shelf natural plants are really unmatched in quality. There are too many different plants here to mention each particular one individually. And again, I thank Fabio for his generosity. So I suggest you visit the website and see exactly how big the range is. What I found is that with about four or five different boxes, I was able to create enough plant Lego bricks, so to speak, to build my jungle with enough variation and difference in texture.
I also got some vines to try out because they're always great to have in my build. As before, I was really impressed with the quality, but I can suggest that wearing gloves when handling these is advised as the dye applied is so rich in pigment it can dye your hands green. But seeing as my hands were already dirty at this stage, I pressed on regardless. I carefully applied these with a tiny dot of glue and some tweezers, just slowly building up areas of growth, letting this evolve naturally in the same way I did with the roots. Another request of mine was some ivy and Diorama Precipe sent me one of their ivy kits. These came with all the leaves pre-attached to the fibres and some separate brown vines. And once again, a good solution for ivy is always something I've wondered about. And these guys nailed it in my opinion. This miniature ivy was probably my favourite thing in the box of goodies and definitely something I will be ordering for myself in the future. I applied some moss to the exposed areas of the roots where some might have gathered over hundreds of years. Just some PVA and a little mix of dark coloured green phlox. I found that using a combination of colours and textures gives you the most realistic look as it reflects the variation that you would normally find in nature. I also took this opportunity to add some moss to the rest of the temple, along with a few small broken rocks and some dirt. Again, no real plan here, just making it up as I go along and going with what feels right. Then I wanted to further draw the natural elements together with the stone. So, using some enamel wash from AK Interactive, I added some streaks and overall weathering. I kept going with this, adding some streaking grime to give a nice deep brown colour. And it's hard to see on camera, but I gave everything a quick dusting with light green from the airbrush just to catch the occasional highlight here and there and generally act as a filter so all the colours kind of sit together. And then it was time to mix up some resin. This is nothing fancy, just cheap from Amazon, used for making jewellery and the like. I had a few drops of paint and less is more at this stage. You can always add more colour but once you put it in you can't take it out so always err on the side of caution at this stage and I found that you can use the mixing stick to test the transparency to check if you've mixed enough paint in and carefully poured this in from a slight height to help with less bubbles just pouring a little at a time letting it smooth out a bit and then adding more if needed and that pretty much brings me to the end of this journey I want to thank you all for joining me on this adventure today. And again, a huge shout out to Fabio at Diorama Precipe for all his support. A 
great guy and a pleasure to work with. Go check them out, you will not be disappointed. If you also want to support the channel, then you can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos, hit the like button for the algorithm, and share it with those who might find it interesting. In nearly a year, building these kinds of models as a hobby, I've learned loads, often through mistakes. But the most valuable lesson I've learned so far is just to try. It will never be perfect at first. Maybe perfection is unachievable, but that's what keeps us coming back and striving to do better. But if you have never done anything like this before or are interested in building dioramas, then I have lots of videos on my channel. There are loads of other great builders on YouTube with, with useful information and tips. But most importantly, try for yourself. I never thought I would be doing this after a year, but with each project I learn more. Still having a long way to go, but having so much fun and the passion is stronger than ever. Here's to the power of imagination. Enjoy. Thank you. 